What up, everybody? It's iPadBeatMaking.com here today on Friday, January 22nd, 2021, giving you some news you can use. Now, before we begin, please hit the like button if you enjoy this video, as well as the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the latest news, tips, tricks, sales, updates, beats, and more. So, the U.S. has officially completed the transfer of power and a new president and administration is at the helm. This is good news to some, bad news to others, and people are polarized on both sides of the situation. But nothing is more polarizing to an iOS music maker than the rumor that the next iPhone will have no ports. Yes, you heard me correctly. No ports. Allegedly, it'll rely on wireless headphones and wireless charging, which is horrible news for iPhone music makers. We find this one hard to believe, but Apple does have a track record that reflects a true hatred of the port, so it's not that far-fetched. Thank goodness for Android having Cubasis and Audio Evolution Mobile though, right? But thankfully, it'll bring back Touch ID, but this time it'll be on the screen itself so that you no longer need to remove that mask to get into your phone, and it'll also keep Face ID. And for those of you who want the most screen real estate possible on your portless phone, the notch will be a little smaller. Apple, how about you just give us a USB-C iPhone and we'll just call it even. And Apple also might be coming out with a new MacBook Pro that loses the touch bar and gets some of its ports back and is going to come in 14 and 16 inch variants with a quote, revamped chassis similar to the iPhone 12 or iPad Pro, end quote. And MagSafe charging may also be returning to the MacBook Pro, all of which sounds very exciting for MacBook Pro users. And the iMac will possibly be getting ultra thin bezels and a flat back and look similar to that of the Pro Display XDR. And all of that's great, but Apple, this new iPad Pro needs to drop in March and it needs to deliver. Stop taking the great ideas that you tested out inside of the iPad and the iPhone and applying them to the Mac. We need some of these great new features brought to iOS also. And Moog decided that universal actually means universal and their Model 15 app has been updated to be compatible with iPhones, iPads, and now Macs also. So the pendulum has started to swing from desktop apps coming to iOS to now iOS apps going to desktop. Have you tried any of these iOS apps on your Mac? If so, what's your thoughts on them? How do they perform in general? And then how do they compare to the native audio unit plugins? Is it like the same thing? Can you not tell the difference? Or is there certain limitations that you see with the iOS ports that you don't get with the native Mac apps? Let us know down in the comment section below. And AudioKit has officially released Digitalism 2000 and so far it's got rave reviews and tons of videos are now available that demo it. And of course the app is also limited edition so be sure to grab it while it's $2.99 because it'll probably shoot to $99.99 and this is not one you want to miss. It's a very great sounding app so be sure to check that out. And in one of the oddest type of updates, uh, an app called Sinusoid, I hope I'm saying that right, which is priced at $4.99, has gotten its first update in four years and is now a UV3. Hey, better late than never. The description says that it's a tracker slash sequencer sound machine inspired by retro 8-bit game consoles. It has four sound channels where three play tones and one plays drums and noise. It has audio parameters like pan, amplitude envelope, vibrato, pitch glide, a resonant filter, and second oscillator for ring modulation and FM. Further scope the sound with an arpeggiator, delay, and bit crusher. So if this type of thing interests you, definitely check that app out and go support the developer. They decided that after four years, it was time to make that transition to AEV3, which hopefully will bring new sales and new life into this app now that we can use it inside of our DAW hosts. So that's great news. And this developer has always had plugins that I've really liked and it's Woodman's Immaculate Maple Syrup Studio. I think I'm getting that right. I might got the words twisted a little bit. But anyways, Woodman has just released Wood Synth for $12.99 and quote, Wood Synth is a synthesizer with four independent layers. 
Each layer is in fact a synthesizer on its own. Each layer has three VCOs plus a samples based source coming from a file or from recording the audio track. Up to 16 voices can be set per layer. So be sure to check this app out. And this developer here has one of the craziest app collections and that is Nimbrini Audio and they've just released Black Ice Beta Gamma. It's $14.99 and the app description says, quote, the most modern bass tones are characterized by a dynamic and complex sound obtained using different tools and recording techniques. For this reason, Nimbrini Audio has decided to create the Black Ice Beta Gamma Bass Amplifier plugin based on modern classic 900 watt bass guitar head and complete it with a virtual recording chain worthy of the best recording studios. This innovative bass amplifier combines a custom tuned overdrive distortion circuit, a studio grade VCA compressor, and a flexible six band graphic equalizer. In the amp section, you can blend clean signal with the incredible beta gamma distortion circuit that can morph from tight and defined overdrive to raw and brutal distortion. A custom VCA style compressor allows you to optimize the bass signal before hitting the six band graphic equalizer carefully tuned to sculpt your bass tone. The Black Ice Beta Gamma Bass Amplifier includes a complete recording chain emulation and our custom designed noise gate circuit. Works as a standalone app, AEV3, or inner app audio effect. So if that interests you, be sure to check that app out and support that great developer. And now let's move on to the updates. First off, we've got Tone Booster Compression, which has issued an update that has new compression modes. Also, their app Realbus has fixed a bug in WoW and Flutter simulation. GeoShred has a fix for tuning and temperament when using global tuning, fix for losing instruments from cache, fix for recording with mono mode interval presets like Fripper Finger Swell, that's a tongue twister, better Audio Bus 3 integration, Fix MIDI out issues with iSymphonic and Swore Plug. Groove Rider GR16 has been updated with a bug fixed in AEV3, which could lead to incorrect state saving and restoring when using several instances of GR16 inside of one host project. And fix the pattern starting to play incorrectly when you paste a copy pattern during playback. Cubasis 3 has a supplemental update, which includes several improvements and fixes and is recommended for all Cubase's users. And as mentioned before, Model 15 has been updated. It's now a universal app available both on iOS and Mac OS for Intel and Apple Silicon computers. Seven new built-in tutorials to learn modular synthesis, new in-app purchase expansion pack synthesis toolkit, support for the MPE configuration message, and more. Funk Drummer controls MIDI mapping, small improvements, updated libraries, and fixed bugs. LK for Ableton Live and MIDI has added MPE support for keyboard module, added fold notes, fold scale, and fold notes to scale support, added full screen mode button to bottom bar, added inspector button to bottom bar, added Korg Nano Control Studio support, added Novation Launch Control XL support, as well as general bug fixes and improvements. SoundFonts has added a new user requested feature, SF2 tagging and filtering. You can now tag SF2 files and only show those with the given tag. So if you use SoundFonts, be sure to check that update out. And World Center Drum Machine, formerly known as Taxim, has squashed some bugs in this version along with UI updates. Koala Sampler has a big update where you can now export individual samples and export them edited or raw. And they fixed the problem where Koala was crashing for some instances when pressing the play button. And fixed the problem where you lose the crop when normalizing. And KB1 Keyboard Suite has a huge update where they've added in new art modes, pedal up, pedal down. Arpeggiator Variation Control now adds ratchets in addition to repeats as it did previously. Added an option to limit the number of MPE channels used. Useful for synths that only have a set amount of voices like the OB6. CC layout now supports buttons in either toggle or momentary mode. In standalone, they now added Ableton Link support, as well as tempo control that can now be tapped for a direct input prompt. 
With the ARP running in chance mode, probability can now be set using the variation control. Scale and root selectors now support popover selection. Fixed an issue where pitch and mod will would always transmit on channel 1 when using the AEV3 plugin. Fixed an issue where using the cord layout and ARP would not work properly with the latch enabled and more. So be sure to update and check that app out if you are a KB1 keyboard suite owner. And with that said, let's move on to sales. First off, we've got Dubstation 2, which was $5.99 and it's now down to $2.99. And Vocal Soloist AEV3 plugin was $7.99 and it's now down to $5.99. And Audio Kit has brought its apps back from the $100 price point down to much more manageable numbers. So Bass 808 Synth, Retro Piano, as well as Audio Tune have all come down from $99.99 to a much more manageable $3.99. And I think that's probably in celebration of the new app Digitalism 2000 that they just dropped. So be sure to grab those other limited edition apps if you have not yet. They're all definitely worth it. And be sure to check out Digitalism 2000 as well. While you can get that app at only $2.99. I mean, why not? With that said, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button as well as the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the latest news, tips, tricks, sales beats tutorials etc etc and be sure to check out some of the best kits available for ios at ipadbeatmaking.com it's ipadbeatmaking.com peace